different species. These are Brassica juncia, like that one, that one, this one, the purple frilly one, and there's a couple more down there. And then like the Tatsoi is Brassica rapa. We have Brassica rapa growing over here as a seed crop. It's not bolting yet, so we're not crossing yet. But were we to allow any of these to go to seed once those are flowering, then they would cross. But this right here, like for instance, and maybe I'll pass these around so you can begin to see some of the, the differences. This is where you're getting more granular. And I'll let you notice first. Mm -hmm. You can see that. So in the this one's Brassica rapa, this one's Brassica gentium. Just see if you could notice the difference. If that's all you had to go off, can you tell there's actually a species difference? Which, well, you can tell. The color of the unopened ones. To me, the Brassica rapa is more pale yellow. And the, the Brassica ginseng is a brighter yellow. Yeah. And that actually correlates across the species. So anyhow, just those kind of things to notice. But we're going to let all these intermate and then we'll get, you know, a whole breeding opportunity. And by having, you know, because these are often used in like a braising mix or salad mix, all the seed I get from that, all I need to save like a seed packet full of my breeding stuff then the rest of it I can put in a spicy mescaline mix. And people will love it. Because it'll you'll get all the things. You know, like this as a baby leaf is really cool, as is this. So again, choosing a species to do a trial that you know you're gonna get, you know, valuable data and yields from. So that's when you do your trials, like unless you're just all about onions, like doing onion trials is not as exciting because like let's say you do a yellow onion trial they all just look like yellow onions mm -hmm. and yeah just so you know for us here for the purposes of like the seed academy this trial that's part of why we did it so you could see it in action and it's very visual so let's come down through here and uh let's make sure those flowers keep getting passed around because it is there's a difference and taste them Mm -hmm. Taste the different ones and see the different things and just really, I don't know, get up close and personal with them. Thanks. Out of these, will there be any that you pulled because you decided, you know, you don't want in your seed stock some that are bolting too quick or anything like that? We're creating such a wide cross. Like, clearly, this one's already, this is so far. Like, this one being in the gene pool is going to skew that. We could get a little fancier. And so check this out. By the time these are flowering, will these still be flowering? Mm. I don't know. Maybe not. And if they aren't, they can't cross. So we could actually, here's what's kind of cool. Right now, if these were the only two Brassica juncia, the two purple ones, I could come in with some masking tape here and say, save for, and come up with a little code and write on there, this is Garnet Giant Cross with Ruby Streaks. But then the lower down ones that aren't open yet will mm. be another one. Wow. Yes, it'll be do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so, and in any cross, this is where, again, it's just such a rabbit hole. Plant breeding, that's why I'm always like, careful which ones you choose, because if you really want to do it. This one, if I'm saving seed from this, this is the mom, that's the dad. But if I'm saving seed from that one, that's the mom, and this is the dad. So in any cross, you actually get two new varieties because some genes are going to be dominant to other ones. Like, so it's think of what the progeny 60%. is. If you were to guess, like, is wide leaf going to be dominant? So think of the Mendel and square, like big A, little A, little A, little A, that, all that kind of stuff. Is broad leaf going to be dominant to dissected leaf or is dissected? Or notice how these are, um, well, these ones are pretty red on the undersides. But notice too, they've got like pink petioles, but some are gonna have more green petioles or white petioles, which is the like venation and the stem. You can really just like, oh my God, what am I doing here? Um, but our general bulk is just gonna be all over the map because look at how different all these things are. So yeah, come on in and trial stuff. Don't step on uh, things. These ones are all gonna be spicy. Mm -hmm. These ones are sweet. Um, And again, as I mentioned on the tour yesterday, 
I've noticed when you grow something at your place for like 10 years and you're doing careful work, then you tend to get, um, it, it, you move the population. So here's a good example. If everybody wants to come down here to the tap site, we're just going to, this is going to be our whipping one that gets whipped right now. So let's say this whole bed was tat soy, and I want to do bolt resistant um, selection on it. Anybody venture a guess like what you'd do? Cut out the ones that are bolting now. Yeah, mm -hmm. or most bolted. So. And eat them. No, and that literally looks like this. This is what roguing is. And it's like when you get into plant breeding, you just can't play favorites. You're just like, I'm sorry. Yeah. You're going to be long. Yeah. You know, so this, I'm creating a negative selection pressure. And then this guy. So, you know, I'm, uh, that's my first one on this guy, too. And then this one. You know, and we're not actually breeding because this would cross with the pak choy. Uh, I need to get it out of here eventually. Anybody wants to take any home or... But the sheep would love it. If you just want to bring it down the sheep, they'd be so stoked. And, and you would want way more plants. Exactly. You need to make sure you wind up with 100. And that's why you start with bigger numbers. Because how... Did I just pull out like half? And it's arguable these ones should come out too. But look at that one. Like, so here's where you begin to see, like think on a one to nine scale of bolt resistance. There's my one. Or here's that, my one. That guy. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So maybe that, these are one. This one's starting to bolt. That's a three. These are fives. And those are nines. seven and nines. <laughs> mm -hmm. But that's just on one trait. So you can imagine you got your clipboard. Bolting is one of the characteristics you're reading for. And you just scored that. Then we get into uh, vigor. That's a one. That's a three. That's a nine. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, and that's just within a population because you have to define what are the, the, you know, the guardrails or what is the, how wide of a lane are you in? Then we could get into, is there actually any differences in, um, you know, like down here, is this bugs or slugs or who's eating them? Is there any difference in flavor? Um, glossiness of leaves. But then notice here, um, this is a cool... Um, an experiment we enjoy doing. Um, okay, yeah, I can do it with this one. I'm going to do it over here where we can see. Um, so check this out. So I'm going to take the leaves off the outside. I'm not going to do every single one, but just to give you a sense. This one mm -mm. or that one? It depends though, right? Because like if they go fast and go through their seed cycle, maybe not drought adapted for eating for us, right? But maybe drought adapted for the uh, survival Surviving. of the plant. I mean, I think you're like any answer is correct in a way because we don't really know. But like think of the like leaf surface exposed to the light. Mm. You know, mm. it's like where these are these big things, like if they don't have water, they're just going to go warm. But of these ones, it's much more compact. And you can look in nature and see adaptation. Like, we don't have, like, giant elephant ear plants in the wild here unless you're in a riparian area, right? But you go to the tropics, and there's a bunch of them. They're trying to get light from underneath that dense canopy. So, again, you're understand it helps you understand that interplay between earthly and cosmic. And then when you, this was taught to me originally by Alan York, and he was at the time really helping that whole, like, biodynamic wine reality would go on. And he would show leaves of like Gewurztraminer and other like northern adapted like German uh, wine uh, cultivars. And then he'd show Chardonnay ones. So a Gewurztraminer is just basically like this kind of very like no, um, you know, lobing. But then a, a Chardonnay is like this. And it's like, well, do you plant a Gewurztraminer on like dry Mediterranean slopes? No, you plant a Chardonnay. And you can begin to understand with varietals what is more adapted to different environments. Mm -hmm. And that's just in grapes. I, don't, I mean, again, you can get so far down on all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to tasting. But I just, understanding that cycle as the plant's reaching up more. And another thing with brassicas, who's, who's grown brassicas to seed here? The seed? By the time you harvest seed, are there any leaves? No, actually. They're yeah. tiny. 
they all fall away. It doesn't even need to photosynthesize. Wow. It's completely divorced. It, all this is withered away and died. It's completely the cosmos, and all it needs is the heat from the sun to dry the seed. It doesn't need the photons to grow the leaves. And that's, I mean, brassica, and think of the, the plant architecture. This one is like this. A mature brassica is like this. Think about it. You know, so again, that earthly part just totally goes away, and it's all about the cosmic, mm. the seed heads drying. And that's, the brassicas illustrate that really well. Lettuces do that same thing. Lettuce is this little leafy mound hugging the ground, wanting to hold on to the washer, water and fertility. And then as it grows up, the leaves fall away. Uh, funguses come in and, and like riddle the thing and like <laughs> eat up the leaves. And then the seeds just there, you know, drying out in the sun. So that's why you don't water them either. During yeah. The so I'd go through, because I learned from Frank Morton, and we'd tag the latest bolting ones with just some uh, surveying flagging, like those little rolls of colored tape and mm. you can write on them with Sharpie. Like, don't harvest for seeds, save for stock seed. And we'd pick just like 10 plants. And I'd save some of the other stuff too, but look at how much later bolting this one is than that nice. one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that one, I know the original stock seed, uh, what I planted was grown in the Applegate Valley, but the seed they got was grown in Vermont. So is this the Osaka? Yeah. Okay. And it's not as red. But you could probably do selection within this for more red. Again, it's hard to select once the sun comes on because you have to like grow things in the environment under which and the time of year that you want it. But same Brassica juncia, look at the difference. Mm -hmm. Just That's just selection over like a decade or two. And it means more food for a longer time of the year. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Damn. Oh, it's tense. Now 